Hey, what is up chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan and what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to explain the process of oxidation and reduction in a chemical reaction. Well, that sounds kind of familiar to the last content objective. We're gonna break it down a little bit differently here. We're gonna talk about how we balance a redox reaction using the half reaction method. Hey Leo, what's up? Okay, so before we start talking about uh, how to actually balance a redox reaction using the half reaction method, I want you to take a look at the reaction that you've got on your screen in your notes. You might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, this thing is already balanced. I've got one aluminum on the reactant side, I've got one aluminum on the product side, one copper on the reactant side, one copper on the product side. Isn't this already balanced? Such a great question. And although it is balanced for mass, our focus in redox reactions is the transfer of electrons. And in addition to the balance of mass, we also have to be balanced for charge. So let's take a look at the steps that are required to balance a redox reaction. First thing you wanna do is assign oxidation states to each element in the reaction and determine the element that's been oxidized and the element that's been reduced. So as we come back to this redox reaction, first thing, Assign oxidation states. Pretty easy to do. Your elements, remember zero, your ions will take the oxidation state of that ion. Think about this then. Our aluminum has been oxidized. It has lost electrons. Our copper has been reduced. It has gained electrons. Okay, so that's your first step. Just identify what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. Step numero dos. Once you have identified what has been oxidized and what has been reduced, you're gonna write the oxidation and reduction half reactions, including electrons either lost or gained. And it's also really good practice to write the potentials for each of the half reactions as well. Now, when you work through this step, it's important to remember that the oxidation half reactions will have the electrons on the right-hand side of the arrow or the product side, because they're losing electrons. And the reduction half reactions will have the electrons on the left-hand side because they're gaining electrons. And then also important for this step, when you use your reduction potential chart, remember that the oxidation potentials are gonna have the same value, but the opposite sign. So back to this reaction. Again, we've identified that our aluminum is going to be oxidized here. Boom, oxidized, lost electrons. Its half reaction is going to include the electrons on the product side. And notice for each mole of aluminum, we're gonna lose three moles of electrons. Now, it's also good practice to include the potential for that half reaction. Now, it's important to remember that this is the oxidation half reaction. So as I go to my reduction potential list, and as I scan my list for aluminum, Remember that this list shows me the reduction potential. And in my reaction, aluminum is being oxidized, or it's the reverse of what we see in this reduction potential chart. So notice that although the reduction potential of aluminum is negative 1.66, its oxidation potential is positive 1.66. My reduction half reaction is gonna look like this. It's just the reduction of the copper ion to solid copper. Notice my electrons are gonna be on the reactant side. And again, keep in mind for every one mole of copper two ion, I'm gonna gain two moles of electrons. My reduction potential here is gonna come straight off of the reduction potential list. Again, this time I'm scanning for copper. Found it, it's gonna be right here. And again, notice that because this is a thing that's being reduced, I'm just gonna leave my reduction potential as is. Step numero three. We are going to then balance each half reaction for mass by adding coefficients in front of the substances in the half reactions. Now, as we look at this reaction, it's already balanced for mass. I have one aluminum on each side of the reaction and one copper on each side of the reaction, so it's already balanced for mass. My fourth step is to balance for charge between half reactions, so the number of electrons gained in the reduction half reaction are equal to the number of electrons lost in the oxidation half reaction. Now, when you do this, it's important not to multiply your potentials, as we'll see. So as I look at my oxidation half reaction, I've lost three electrons, but in my reduction half reaction, I've gained two electrons. So I need to multiply my half reactions by a factor that will get me to gain the same number of electrons 
as electrons that I've lost. Now in this example, what that means is I have to multiply my oxidation half reaction by a factor of two. So notice that for every mole of aluminum, I get three moles of electrons. So if I have two moles of aluminum being oxidized, I'm gonna lose six moles of electrons. Notice, and this is important, we're not gonna apply this factor to my oxidation potential. That's gonna stay at just positive 1.66. That's an intensive property. It doesn't change no matter how much of the aluminum you have. For my reduction half reaction, I'm gonna multiply by a factor of three. So if each mole of copper ion is gonna gain two electrons, three moles of copper ion will gain six electrons. Now notice what this does. Now I have lost six moles of electrons in my oxidation half reaction and gained six moles of electrons in my reduction half reaction. All right, my fifth and final step then is just recombine the half reactions into one complete reaction, canceling electrons and summing the potentials to get the potential for the overall reaction. So notice what's gonna happen here. My six, electro my six moles of electrons will cancel out. When I sum the reaction together, I end up with coefficients of two, three, two, and three. And the overall potential for this reaction is positive 2.00 volts. I've just added my oxidation potential to my reduction potential. So now my reaction is not only balanced for mass, but it is also balanced for charge. Okay, and the last thing to think about is what does that potential mean for your overall reaction? Well, if a redox reaction is spontaneous or if it will occur without any outside force, there's gonna be a positive potential for that overall reaction. However, if you end up with a negative value for that reaction as written, it's said to be non-spontaneous or that reaction is not gonna happen as written. It's actually the reverse that will be spontaneous. So as you look at your notes, you're given a couple of reduction potentials. Notice that in the first combined reaction, we show the copper ion as being reduced and the zinc as being oxidized. And when you combine those potentials, you get a positive overall potential for the reaction, which means that it will be spontaneous. However, if we added solid copper to some aqueous zinc solution, we're gonna get a negative value for our overall potential for that reaction, indicating that the reaction will be non-spontaneous as written. But note that these two reactions are just the reverse of one another. So if you ever have an equation that as written shows you as to be non-spontaneous because you have a negative potential for that reaction, just flip it to get what you need to do to have that reaction be spontaneous. All right, that's it for this video. As always, check out the references beneath the video and have a fantastic day.